on the screen is the Mini VNA Tiny software. It's called VNA J that you have seen before. Uh, I'll show you a list of the uh, previous videos here in a second. But uh, the, the Mini VNA Tiny is a 3 gigahertz vector network analyzer that works off a uh, computer. And what you're looking at is a 3 dB attenuator made by many circuits. The green trace at the top is the transmission. Notice that there are a few little wiggles uh, around one and a half gigahertz. It's a megahertz on the left and three gigahertz on the right. And but the more important thing is notice that the phase reaches uh, 180 degrees at about 2.7 gigahertz, 2.65, 2.7, something like that. The uh, reason that I'm doing this is I'm comparing the Mini VNA Tiny, which is a 3 gigahertz vector network analyzer, with the version 2 of the Nano VNA that I've previously compared with the other Nano VNAs. So, in other words, we've compared this with the VNAs, the Nano VNAs that go up to 900 megahertz and one and a half gigahertz. This one goes up to three gigahertz. So, I'm just using this many circuits uh, attenuator to give me something to compare the relative response of the mini VNA, uh, tiny, actually it's the tiny plus, and the nano VNA. So let me show you the setup that we've got, and then we'll move on and do the same thing with the version two. Here is the mini VNA tiny. Uh, I have previously reviewed this or used this in numbers 253, 254, 255, and 256. So if you're not familiar with the Mini VNA Tiny and would like a little more information on it, you might look at uh, one or more of those videos. The particular device that I am testing is this Mini Circuits 3dB attenuator It's a 50 ohm SMA attenuator, and I'm just using this as a test, uh, as a test bed. I'm mainly not interested in the specific characteristics, uh, characteristics of this. Uh, I'm more interested in the comparative characteristics of what does the Mini VNA Tiny show and what does the Nano VNA version 2 show. So before I go to the Nano VNA though, I'm going to do one additional device, which is a splitter that is also made by many circuits. Let me get it open here and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the splitter and What it does is it splits a signal on the input, which is called S, and sends half of the signal to port 2 and half of the signal to port 1. Now there are some additional losses, so it's not, uh, it doesn't just uh, cut the signal in half, it actually attenuates it a little more than half, but basically the idea is that the characteristics through this device should be the same and should go from DC to 4200 megahertz. And that's the most important thing. I'm looking at the, at the relative ability of these vector network analyzers to work above a gigahertz or so. So let's hook that up and take a look at that on the screen and then we'll go over and look at the Nano VNA.
Now I've hooked up the splitter and the Mini VNA Tiny, the DUT output, is connected to the S port or the input port. Port 2 is terminated with a 50 ohm termination and we are reading the transmission from S to port 1 which is connected to the other uh, detector input on the Mini VNA Tiny. So let's go look at what the uh, the VNAJ software shows us are the characteristics of this uh, device. And if you remember, the this was the attenuator and it's still on the screen. Now we are going to do a new analysis, single scan, using the Mini VNA Tiny on the Mini Circuit Splitter. And there you see a relatively constant phase shift from about 0 degrees to about 180, right at 3 gigahertz. So those give us two, uh, and notice by the way that it's about 6 dB of loss through the splitter. 3 dB is due to losses inside the, the uh, circuit itself, and the additional 3 dB is because the, the input's being split or halved. The, uh, but mainly what I'm interested in is the phase characteristics that the Mini VNA Tiny shows. Now you may notice that we still have this waviness around one and a half gigahertz. So now let's set up the Nano VNA version 2 and do the same thing, but uh, on the same exact same two devices over roughly the same frequency range, in other words up to about three gigahertz. And now this is the Nano VNA V2 set also to go from a megahertz on the left to three gigahertz on the right. The yellow trace at the top is the log magnitude of the transmission, in other words S21, and the blue trace is the phase of S21, in other words it's the phase of the transmission. And, and you notice that just as we saw, uh, oh by the way, we're, we're also we're doing the uh, mini circuits uh, uh, attenuator on this one. And if you remember, it showed the phase on the mini VNA Tiny to hit 180 degrees at somewhere a little above two and a half gigahertz, not quite the midpoint. And you notice that that's pretty much what this uh, VNA, uh, Nano VNA V2 is doing. I'll just call it V2 and I'll call the other one Tiny. So V2 and Tiny show essentially the same 3 dB of loss and 180 degrees of phase shift pretty linearly from a megahertz to about two and a half to or I'm sorry about 2.7 or 2.65 gigahertz uh, at which time the phase shift is 180 degrees. So now let's try the splitter and that should give us a couple of data points to compare these two vector network analyzers. And here we see the results that we get for the uh, splitter. Once again we're getting about 6 dB of loss across the full range, looks pretty flat. And our phase change from 1 megahertz on the left to 3 gigahertz on the right looks to me like that it's the same 180 degrees at 3 gigahertz. So what I am going to conclude from this is I realize we've only got two data points uh, for each VNA, two devices, but my confidence in the V2 Nano VNA goes up quite a bit when I find that it correlates nicely with what we got on the Mini VNA Tiny. Furthermore, I know I have checked this Mini VNA Tiny against the more expensive analyzers, and I know this is pretty accurate, at least up to 3 gigahertz which is its 
upper frequency range. So I was curious to see if the V2 would be equally accurate up to 3 gigahertz. And based on two experiments, I realized that that's not metrology. That's just uh, a couple of a couple of uh, data points. But nonetheless, looks pretty good to me. For, for those of you that are wondering, let me also show the uh, splitter. Once again, we're using the 50 ohm termination on port 2, and we're measuring the transmission from the S port to the number 1 port. Now, just a few housekeeping chores here at the end. In both cases, I calibrated the Mini VNA Tiny and the V2 using the same standards. So I used this 50 ohm standard, which actually is the standard that came with the Tiny, and I used it to calibrate both units. Furthermore, I used the short and open standards that came with the Tiny to not only calibrate the Tiny, but also to calibrate the V2. So, in both cases, I recalibrated as soon as I set the frequency ranges. In both cases, I used the same traces, that is magnitude, uh, log magnitude for uh, trace uh, zero and phase for trace one. And in both cases, I used the same exact frequency range and the exact same devices. So, for those of you that might have been interested in the V2, it's quite a bit less expensive than the VNA Tiny. I am sure that there are places where each of them has advantages or disadvantages that the other do not have, but for a general vector network analyzer, I'm impressed by this uh, V2. I certainly would recommend it. I've used the Tiny, which is over there, more. So I have more experience with it, and I have not found it to, to ever let me down either. But it retails for around 500 and something dollars, whereas I think I paid just a little over $70 for this. The one downside is it takes a little while right now to get them, but in the coming weeks or months, maybe that will speed up and we'll get some local uh, American suppliers who can ship them out of stock. But at any rate, Nano VNA version 2 versus VNA Tiny, I think it's a draw. Hope you've gotten something out of this, enjoyed it. Uh, we'll move on to some other things, perhaps, but in the meantime, stay safe and have a nice day.